Hi, my name is Cody Biswitherick. And I'm Tyson Friesen. Welcome to Kindersley Alliance Church. We'd like to invite you to worship with us today. <laughs> Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning and thank you for inviting us into your space. I'm here with the Glass family in the Glass Gazebo, and I'm very thankful to them for inviting me into their space. As I was growing up at a really small church in the southern of Saskatchewan, all the songs we sang were hymns, usually in four-part harmony. And as we grew up, Ted and I, and as we had our own family, we spent a lot of time singing in the car these same hymns and sing, trying to learn some harmony. So join with us this morning. I 
Happy Father's Day, Dad! Happy Father's Day, Dad! Beep, 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 beep. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Ah! Happy Father's Day, Dad! Beep, 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 beep. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! This isn't working. Where's Dad? Happy Father's Day! Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day! We'd like to wish you a Happy Father's Day. We'd also like to show you some of the projects that we've been working on in social isolation. We would like to warmly welcome Mandy Ralph as she preaches on the spiritual discipline of prayer. Good morning. My name is Mandy Ralph and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us today from wherever you're joining us. First of all, I'd like to wish all the fathers a very happy Father's Day. For those who are celebrating today, I hope that this is a day full of love and joy for you today. And we're celebrating with everyone who's celebrating today. So you might notice that I'm in a little bit of a different space. This is my dining room in my house, and we're going to be talking about prayer today. And so I'm going to take you through three different places that are important for me, important places where I pray. So you'll see me in different settings, and we'll be talking about different ways of prayer and different ways that it impacts us as we journey together. So, you know, a little variety adds spice to life. So you'll get to see some of these places that are important to me and in my prayer life. So I have a question for you. Who is the one person in your life that you are the most comfortable with? And I mean, the person you can walk into your house, flop on their couch, um, they've seen you, you know, at your worst and they've seen you at your best. I can think of a couple of people in my life. One of course is my mom. It's hard to not feel comfortable with somebody who's changed your diapers. I feel comfortable with my sisters, with my brother. I also am, really comfortable with my husband. He's probably the person that I'm most comfortable with in my life. There's a level of knowledge there and intimacy. He's known all of my good days and he's known my bad days. And what makes us comfortable with these people? Well, time spent is a huge thing. Feeling accepted for who we are 
um, for our good things and for our faults. They're the people that stick with us through thick and thin and they know us inside and out. When I think of that sense of intimacy and people that we're very comfortable with, I think about Jesus and the disciples and how they had these three years of traveling together. They would have been on dirty roads. They would have had sometimes frayed tempers. There would have been misunderstandings. They would have bickered. They would have laughed, you know, all the inside jokes. They would have known each other really deeply and well. And as I was thinking about this as well, I thought about the disciple John. And there are times in scripture in the Gospel of John where he calls himself the disciple who Jesus loved. When we look at prayer and we look at what it means to be intimate with God, what does that resonate within you? What does it mean for you when you think to be intimate with God? Maybe it means that you're really familiar with God, you know him well, you feel like he knows you, you know that you're loved. But for some people, there's a sense of nervousness about that, something that they maybe shy away from. Spiritual disciplines are that we've been talking about, they're a way of us being intimate with God. They're a way of God knowing, showing us that he knows us and a way of us knowing God better and the transformation that happens when that occurs for us. Because as God shows us how we are known and we get to know him, we are changed because we interact with him and we're available to him for that change. Prayer as a discipline is a gateway into that kind of intimacy with God. Richard Foster in his book actually says prayer is our gateway to intimacy with God. It's that time spent listening and time spent talking with God, getting to know him, to understand his heart and to know ourselves better as we see ourselves through his eyes. And so what does intimacy with God look like? Just like with your person, it looks like being known. Someone who knows you, knows all of who you are, knows your past, your present and has dreams for your future. Also, it's us knowing God. There's an intimacy in that as well. And also, those people, those people in our lives who impact us and who are our people that we're comfortable with, we're changed for the better because of the relationship we have with them. So intimacy is being known. Intimacy with God is knowing God, and it's being changed for the better. Prayer is our way of knowing God better, learning how he knows us, and it changes us. And as we interact with God, like I said, we are changed. So what do our prayer lives look like? It's as varied as there are people who believe in God. So many of us know how we should pray and we try to pray, but we don't feel like we quite get it. We look around us and we see other people who seem to understand prayer in a way that we just don't. Those prayer warriors, those people who can be on their knees in front of God for hours on end and we think, I don't know how I could ever be that person. I just don't feel like it's in me. I feel like I'm missing something. In my own experience with the spiritual disciplines in prayer, I came to a point in my life, probably later than I wished it was, when I looked around me and I thought, there are people who understand God and are more spiritual grown-ups than I am. So I decided now it's time for me to try and figure out how to be a spiritual grown-up. And the spiritual disciplines were a wonderful way for me to enter into that process saying, okay, God, how can I be intentional in my relationship with you? And prayer was a huge part of that. Now, full confession time, I'm not a natural prayer warrior. That is something that I've had to work at and something that I've had to develop. And I've still got a long way to go. But there are elements that have been really transformative for me. One of them is silent listening prayer. And Pete talked about that last week where how we spend time in quiet before God listening. And that has been transformative for me. It wasn't always easy. It's something that I've really had to practice. And even now, sometimes it's not easy. It depends on the day I have, depends on where I am in my life, the stresses, but it's something that I'm really intentional about because I know how transformative it can be. So there are ways we can pray that help us grow in our relationship with God. We've talked about listening to God. And there are ways that teach us how we are loved and help us to love God and to love others better. When I think about how we can look at this um, integration of prayer, Psalm 139 is one that has been very transformative for me. When we look at this psalm, it, David in this psalm actually lays out a pathway for us to find intimacy with God through prayer. So it's a familiar psalm, oh God, 
you know, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. So those might be familiar things. But what if we looked at this in the context of how we learn how to pray? David, who wrote this, and I'll invite you to turn to Psalm 139 with me. David, who wrote this, he knew God and he knew how God viewed him. And there was a steadfastness in God's love for him, despite all of his failings. So when we look at Psalm 139, David lays out for us different sections. There's a section about how God knows us and how we can know ourselves. There's parts that tell us about how we can know God and the outward changes that happens from that. But there are obstacles for us in prayer, things that inhibit our listening and our desire to go deeper with God in prayer. And we don't always like to talk about those obstacles, but I know the more people I interact with when I talk with them about prayer, especially prayer where we listen to God and invite God to tell us how much he loves us, people are reserved about that. So the number one thing that I hear, and I've taught on spiritual disciplines for a number of years, and this is very dear to my heart, when I talk to people, the number one thing that I hear is, if I'm quiet and still with God and there's nothing else around me, I'm afraid of what I'm going to hear. I hear this a lot. So if that is something that you're feeling, this is not uncommon. What will I hear? How do we answer that? Well, scripture tells us, keep your bookmark in Psalm 139 and let's flip to Romans 8. Romans 8 verses 1 and 2. It says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So what do we hear when we're quiet and still with God and we're listening intentively to him? We hear that the Holy Spirit within us does not condemn. The Holy Spirit points us towards Christ. So if you're hearing condemnation, you're not hearing God. God corrects us, guides us, speaks words of love to us. And there is that transformation. God invites us into how we can be changed to look more like Christ. But there's not condemnation there. And scripture tells us that clearly. So we can come freely before God listening and saying, you know what, God, I want to hear what you have to say because I know what you say will be loving. And it will transform me for the better. Being known is a deep cry and desire of our heart. We want people to know who we are. We want people to understand us, our feelings, our emotions, our motivations. God knows us better than anyone. Let's flip to Psalm 139 again, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 6, because this is an intense discussion that David gives us about how God knows us. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. Everything. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. And you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too great for me to understand. So through this we see that God knows us. There's nothing about us he doesn't know. And through prayer, we have the opportunity to explore what that means. Now, how do we do that? Sometimes we can say, God, can you just show me? And in our listening prayer posture, that can absolutely work. I've had times sitting here in this chair, looking out my window, and I say, God, I just need you to tell me what you think of me. And he'll speak words of love, of comfort, of affirmation, of correction sometimes, places that he knows I can look more like him. But there are other practices in this discipline of prayer that we can look at. And I'm going to give you some guidance and some ways of praying that can really help you learn about yourself better through God's eyes. And there's two forms of prayer and they look really similar and they're used for different portions of scripture. So I'm going to be talking about how we can be known by God and know ourselves better through praying through scripture. So these two kinds of prayer are called imagination prayer and Lectio Divina. So imagination prayer and Lectio Divina, they're similar and you can use them both for different kinds of things that you read in the Bible. So if you're in parts of the Bible that talk about stories and stories of people in the Bible and characters and, you know, some of those narrative things that read like histories or read like stories, you can use imagination prayer. And if you're reading through things like the Psalms or the Prophets, 
then you can use Lectio Divina. And I'm not saying they don't overlap, but it tends to be, um, they would suit well to these different kinds of scripture that we can read through. So when we look at imagination prayer and Lectio Divina, there's three processes that we go through, three steps in this kind of prayer. And they're the same steps. It's just within each, you kind of adapt depending on which prayer you're doing. So the first thing that we do is we read. If we're gonna be praying through scripture, we need to read scripture. So you choose your passage and you sit in a place that suits you. For me, this is a great place. Sometimes my kids interrupt. Sometimes they wander down and put their head on my shoulder, but you know what, that's okay because it's really good for kids to see us engaging with God and getting to know God better. So the first thing we do is read. Take this chunk of scripture that you're doing. It can be, you know, a couple of verses. It can be part of a chapter and you read through it and you sit with it. Then the next step is that you notice. So in some of these narrative stories in the Gospels or in the Old Testament, these stories of people and characters and experiences, you get to use your imagination. And what you, what you do is you place yourself in the story so you notice what are the things that I would be seeing if I was there? What would I smell? What would I taste? What would I hear? If I'm in the middle of a crowd that's following Jesus, what what would that sound like? You know, is it squishy? Is it cluttered? Is it noisy? Also, you think, who am I in this story? Am I one of the characters that's talked about? Am I part of the crowd that's observing? And what am I feeling right now? How do I feel? Am I excited? Am I nervous? Am I angry? As I'm this character in the story. Imagination is something God gives us to know him better. And it's something we can use in our prayer life to understand better what God's trying to reveal to us. So don't be afraid to use your imagination. The Bible is full of things that excite our imaginations. So you notice, place yourself in the story and notice what's there. If you're doing reading through a Psalm or you're reading through the prophecies, what are you gonna be noticing? You're gonna be noticing images that stand out to you, word pictures. You're gonna be noticing different phrases, maybe phrases like the glory of God. You're like, huh. I notice that one a lot. Or maybe you're noticing how you're feeling in response to certain phrases and, and situations that are um, unfolding for you as you read. So you read through the passage, then you notice, depending on what kind of passage you're reading through. And then the most important part, the last step is you listen. You listen for God and you place questions before him about what you've read. So, for example, if, it's, if I've placed myself in a story in one of the Gospels of Jesus, then I'm going to sit with that and think, okay, God, why am I this person in the story? Or why am I feeling this thing as I'm part of this story? And asking Holy Spirit to reveal to us something about ourselves. Maybe if I'm in a crowd and I'm angry, maybe I need to be attentive to that. Is there something in my life that, that I'm angry about? Or is there a person that, that I need to make right with. You listen. You listen for um, the way God loves you. You listen for the ways he's created you so you know yourself better. And you listen to things maybe he's saying, this is something you need to pay attention to because I want to grow more deeply in you. If you're going through the Lectio reading, you've looked through the images and phrases and feelings. And then the question before God is, God, why did that phrase mean something to me? What are you trying to show me with how I'm engaging with this. What does that image mean? How does that relate to me in my life right now? And through that, God might um, lay out for you something that he wants you to know about yourself. He might bring to mind a memory. We don't know. God is infinite in how he can engage with us and how he can talk with us if we're willing to listen. And what we're doing in this prayer is we're saying, God, what do you want me to show? What do you want to show me about myself? And most importantly, God, what do you want to show me about you? So that is one of the, the ways that we can engage with God, engage with scripture, praying through it and saying, God, what do you have to show me today? It's a way of knowing ourselves better. And it's a way of us understanding how God sees us and what he knows about us. Well, I have to admit, this is the first time that I've preached in my van. It's not the first time I've practiced preaching in my van, but it's the first time that I've actually preached. But this is another place that I pray a lot. 
believe it or not, not just because, you know, in the time when I had toddlers that I just needed the prayers for patience, although I did, but there's something about driving conversations, isn't there? So when Pete and I were dating, Pete's my husband, we spent a lot of time driving. We spent time having conversations that were just, you know, little conversations about what do you like and, you know, what's your favorite this and that. And then we had really in-depth conversations and we still do. Sometimes for dates, we just go on a drive and we just talk and we're just together. And that talking and that kind of being together, chatting, not just in the tiny little things and the meandering conversations, but the intense conversations was a way that I really got to know Pete. Prayer is a way that we can get to know God better. And the same way that we have relationships with people, that intentional spending time listening is how we get to know who God is as well. So there are different kinds of prayers that we pray. And these are some that I practice when I'm driving, when I'm driving for a long time, I sometimes have what's what I like to call popcorn prayers. And those are prayers that are things when I look around, I'll be like, God, I like this about you. So God, I really like that you made flowers and you didn't have to make the colors you did. Or God, I really like that you gave human beings creativity and imagination. And those are the popcorn prayers where I talk to God and listen to God and pay attention to who he is through the little things that are talked about. There's something in prayer, these, um, this idea of praying without ceasing that I think is intimidating for many of us because they think, how can I pray for 24 hours a day? I have things to do. I've got to go to work. And first Thessalonians 5 17 says, don't stop praying. And I think that that actually is a lot about these small popcorn prayers that we pray these meandering prayers through our day where we notice and we pay attention to who God is and what he has to show us during our day. And it can be prayers of God. This is what I see. This is what I know about you. It can be prayers of God. Please help me not to yell at this person at work. It can be God. I need patience in this situation right now. But this idea of noticing and starting to pray and making prayer a regular part of just how we go in and out of our day. If we look at this first Thessalonians passages in verse 16, which is right before don't stop praying, it talks about being joyful. And in verse 18, right after it talks about being thankful. So when we're praying through our day, we start noticing things and we're intentional at noticing things that bring us joy and things that we can be grateful for to God. So that's a good way to start. So if you say, God, I don't know how to pray without ceasing. Start noticing things around you and talking with God about them. God, I, I love the grass, the smell of these things. Nature is a great way to start noticing things about God, noticing about who he is as creator and how he loves us through his creation. We can start noticing things about people as we say, you know what, God, this person looks like they're having a good day. I don't know what's wrong, but can you just be with them? That tells us about who God is and how he cares for us and how even the little things are important and meaningful to him. So there's those small little meandering prayers through our day that are ways of us getting to know God better. There's also in-depth prayers that we can pray, these deep relational prayers with God. And one of these is called examine. And examine basically means it's an in-depth prayer to know yourself and to know God better. It's an, an examination that a doctor would do where he, he looks in depth at what's going on inside of you. So examine is a way for us prayerfully to look in depth at who God is and what he's doing inside of us. Psalm 139 is a prayer that has long been used to show us about ourselves and about God. It's been called a prayer of examine. If we look further on into the prayer, verses 5 and 6 talk about where God is. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing upon me. You're with me. Verses 7 to 12, things like, I can never escape from your spirit. You're always with me. Um, if I go to heaven, you're there. If the grave, you're there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, there you are. I cannot escape your presence. That talks about who God is, his intentionality and his creativity. And verses 13 to 18 about how God knit us together so intentionally and lovingly talk about how God loves us. So how do we practice this prayer of examine to get to know God better in a really intentional and in-depth way? This prayer of examine you can do at the end of your day. You can do it um, to review your day and look back at how God has been with you. You can actually take a specific situation that's going on in your life and pray 
prayerfully through it to see who God is and where he is in it. Or you could also look at a memory that you have that you're wondering about and bring it before God in a prayer of examine. So we look at where God is, who God is, and how God loves as we do this prayer of examine. So where God is, once again, it's noticing. Looking back through our day and saying, God, where were places that you were with me? Places that you um, intervened where I felt your presence and I felt your goodness. So where are you? Where are you in nature today, God? We also can ask questions of God. So we notice where God is in situations. Then we say to God, who are you? God, where were you with me today? Were you my provider? Were you my protector? Were you my sustainer? Were you the source of my peace and my patience? Did you help me not to get upset with that person? Did you help me to look more like you today? So who God is. If we ask who God is in a memory or situation, we can say, God, where were you when this happened to me? What did that look like? And then we sit and we prayerfully listen for God's answer. And I've done this in my life and it's been transformative. We can also say to God, why did this thing happen? And God will reveal himself to us where he was and how he loved us in that moment. And then the last section, verses 13 to 18, focuses on how God loves us enjoying who he is with us and telling us who we are in his eyes. And this is a chance for us to be grateful. It's this last step of God, I saw where you were and how you loved me. Thank you for that. Those are prayers that we pray to get to know God better. So let's go see what it means to have an outward transformation from prayer. So, so far we've talked about how we pray and we learn more about how God sees us and we know ourselves better. We also pray and what happens is that we learn how to know God better and we know God better. There are other ways that prayer is affected by this transformation because as we walk more deeply with God, as we pray and enter that intimacy with him, we are changed inwardly. Jesus changes us so that our heart looks more like his heart and with that inward change, it affects our outward reality. That outward reality looks like our actions and how we treat other people. I'm standing here in our church because a really important component of prayer is praying with each other. God's given us community to encourage us, to pray with us, to help us, to keep us accountable as we seek to know God better and we seek to deepen our relationship with him. But sometimes there's this wariness within us about praying for other people or being prayed for. We don't always understand why. Sometimes the phrase, but I'm not a prayer warrior comes up. Well, guess what? Nobody who is a prayer warrior started out as a prayer warrior. Like with all of these disciplines, we practice and we learn and we get better and we stretch and we grow as God helps us as we enter into these spiritual disciplines. And it's the same way with prayer. The more we pray, the better we are at engaging with God in prayer. And the better that our desire is and our intimacy is with God and it cycles, so it builds. So these people that we look at that are prayer warriors have spent a life intentionally stepping into prayer in order to deepen their relationship with God. And they just understand it in a deep and intimate way and they crave it. So be encouraged that this is something that we can grow and develop with God's assistance and transformation in our lives. Something else that I hear often is people say, but what if I pray the wrong thing when I'm praying for someone? I'm nervous about how my words sound. I'm nervous about not knowing the right thing to say and I'm nervous I'll mess it up. Well, be, don't be afraid because when we look in the book of Romans, God talks about how he makes provision for the fact that sometimes we don't know the right things to say. Let's get into Romans 8 again, starting in verse 26. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. 
So what God is telling us here is that even though your words might fumble, even though you don't know the right thing to say, if we align our hearts on someone else's behalf and align them with God's heart, then the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf and our words are perfect. Our words are perfect. So we don't need to worry about praying the perfect prayer because if we believe that our perfect words are what changes things, we're taking God's power and might out of the equation because it's God who transforms and who intercedes in situations. Our prayer is aligning ourselves with God's will and his desire for people. And he's made a, a smooth pathway for us where we don't need to worry about how our words sound and are we stumbling and do we say the wrong thing? Because God's put Holy Spirit there to say exactly the perfect thing for us and intervene on our behalf. So don't worry, it's not about our performance in prayer. Sometimes when we say we'll pray for someone, we go away in our week and we're diligent and we do that. But often what we need to do is we need to pray for that person in that moment as well as during the week. There's a story that I've heard from a young woman and she was a woman in a church that I'd been in previously and she was going through a very difficult time and she was feeling isolated and alone and it was a really tough situation that she was going through and she said I continually ask people for people for prayer and she said I believe they went home and prayed for me but not one single person offered to pray with me in that moment and she expressed to me her feeling of isolation that for months and months more than six months she hadn't had anyone physically be present and pray with her and she felt so isolated and alone and forgotten when we pray with another person, it builds joy, it builds encouragement, it helps us to recognize that we're not alone. So we know now that we don't need to worry about perfect words and being a prayer warrior. We come together in order to support each other and to pray for each other. And it draws us closer in community, but it also draws us closer to God and helps that alignment with our heart for His. So prayer is an intimate act that we experience with God. And it's a way of enhancing our intimacy, a way that we are drawn into that relationship with him. The more we pray, the deeper our hunger is for God. The deeper our desire is to spend that time with him, to know more about him, to know more about how he sees us. And, and we hunger for that transformation that aligns our hearts with his heart. We long to be sanctified by Jesus in us. So my prayer for all of us is that we would step in courage into this discipline, that we would recognize that we need this like we need breath in our bodies. We need this intimacy with God. And this is a way that we can step in and make ourselves available for that relationship. That is my prayer for all of us. And I, I hope that that is a desire of your heart and an encouragement for you that to start with one step and God will help you and God will grow in you what he wants to see in you we're not in this alone we have this because of who god is and how much he loves us let's pray god i'm so thankful that you want this kind of relationship with us where we are known and we know you jesus i thank you that your presence within us is transformative and that you sanctify us to know who we are in your eyes and we align um, align our hearts with yours because of what you do in our lives and holy spirit thank you that our stuttering words are heard perfectly in god's ears and that you continually point us towards towards christ in us you help us to know and to learn what prayer does within us and how it creates this this sense of intimacy with god so God, for all of us, I pray that we would hunger and thirst for you, that we would spend time in prayer, even if it feels shaky and unfamiliar. And we know that you will be there as you always are. And we are grateful and thankful. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us this week. Go in prayer and we'll see you next time.